most people come in, even though they're accomplished journalists and have been around and asked people tough questions, they come in usually on Sunday night a little fearful. I've seen people who were very uh, distant and very skeptical. We're talking journalists here. We're talking skeptical. You do a lot of work. You know, you, you have to get up much earlier than I ever want to get up. I mean, you get up earlier than some, some days and I won't go to bed. The pointer tries very hard also to make sure that these things are not onerous and heavy duty and university classroom like. There's laughter and stories told. You're in a room where you're talking to people who may be far more experienced than you are, may have come from very different places, but nonetheless are, are willing to share with you in a very open way. I can't tell you how many times I went into the seminar room thinking that I was the teacher and when the hour was up uh, I knew that I had been transformed in some powerful way. So much happens in that room. There's, there's so much passion and potential and I've seen enough of these seminars to know that it's no fluke. After we've done our work, um, I think people reestablish the bond that they had with the work in the first place. And by the time they leave, they're usually sky high. They're ready to go take on the world, go back to the newsroom, uh, burst on the scene and help everyone else get better. So we try to calm them down just before they leave and that's going to be good to the people they left there and to really plan what two or three things they want to do to change and improve. In our part of the world, we've had to deal a lot with the issue of the white supremacists. We needed guidance both in ethics and in covering race. We were in a room of people from around the country who talked in a very passionate way about race. It has something to do with race relations and about the issues related to covering of race. And I came back from that with both inspired and with a very much clearer understanding of what it meant to cover race relations. After the session on ethics, I was able to bring back and put in my drawer a neat eight and a half by 11 inch sheet that said, here is a framework for making ethical decisions on deadline. And that's been a godsend. This is one of those businesses where we take the people who, who are the best at what they do and because they are, we make them managers just for that reason. Most of them have no training in management. They're there simply because they were great producers or great reporters. That's why I think the Pointer Institute it serves a great purpose. It allows especially new managers to come in and, and learn some of these skills, to take their journalism skills, but to marry them with some of the good management skills. The investment is so small compared to what you get in return. They're going to come back a better employee. They're going to come back someone who is better in touch with who they are as a journalist. Uh, they're going to come back motivated. They're going to come back encouraged to be in this business. Pointer gave me an education in the business side of the media. And I have been able to have a very fruitful career as a journalist in new media because of that. The clash between business and journalism that's happening on the Internet shouldn't be a clash. It's a learning experience. And again, a role for Pointer is, is that it's one of the few places that productive dialogue around those issues can happen. Pointer in many ways sort of gave me the chutzpah to come in every day and say, hey, we've got to put our heads together. And we've got to solve this problem. We've got to put our heads together and attack the story from a different angle. Look at the news in any local market and you'll realize that on most days, most news stations cover the same stories. So now it becomes a question of how do you separate yourself? How do you differentiate yourself? And at the Pointer Institute, you learn ways to look for different voices. I've never worked in a newsroom that had enough bodies, especially in television news. So I can understand every newsroom in the country going, I can't let people go for a week for a seminar. The only thing I can say is, have you ever had somebody come back and seen what happens? People come back more efficient, more driven, more able to communicate with their peers. Well, the Pointer has been known for a number of years, uh, particularly in the areas of page design and typography. Over the last three or four years, as they have expanded their visual journalism curricula to include more aspects of photography and picture editing, it's just blossomed in that organization into a, a full wing of that entire educational institution. They have created a number of workshops in which there is discussion of newsroom politics, dealing closely with other editors in the newsroom, uh, how to put your ideas forth in a better fashion, 
um, how teamwork can be improved, and that's a very valuable thing also. Well, I think it represents a, kind of an oasis of education and training um, outside the hum and buzz and cynicism of the newsrooms. You know, you're sitting in a hotel room in a Ramada Inn pounding something out in West Memphis, Arkansas. It's kind of the opposite of Pointer, but, but Pointer's impact will reach into that hotel room. You know, I mean, it really will, because the things that you've talked about and that you said you believed in shouldn't disappear in that hotel room. One of the things that I think is very valuable about my experience with Pointer has been to talk about exactly how we broaden, broaden our perspective, challenge our own assumptions about who's important, about who's got a voice in a story. In a room full of 20 people, you'll hear 20 different ways that that story was approached. There is nothing more mind expanding than finding out that this was only one way and that you can apply that same uh, breadth to every story you encounter. And I think you've touched on some good elements. How to make a story sing. People need to know the writer cares about it. Good active quotes. The programs of Pointer are the best bang for the buck as far as we're concerned. The ability to say, what do you mean? It's very hard work, but it's a different kind of work. You're, you're using a different part of your brain and actually a different part of your soul. It's not as if Pointer is the only institution or group that does this kind of thing. I just think they're the best at it. It's gymnastics of the mind. You with me on one and two? If your mind could have a physical trainer, the Pointer Institute would be it. It's spring training where you go to get serious about something that you love and that you make a profession out of and you go to get in shape and you go to exercise your muscles so you can go out and play through the season at your best potential. It sticks. I did an interview today for NBC News and I specifically thought about things that Bob Steele from the Pointer Institute gave me 12 years ago. It reminds you why you love it, and it reminds you why you do it, and it reminds you um, why you keep doing it. I've always wanted to open up a bait shop, you know. Pointer reminds me why I don't need to go do that.